Hosea chapter 9. God is still speaking to a nation that are his people. No other nation. And they have rejected what he has told them to do. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy, as other people. For thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. And that is chapter 1 and chapter 2. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. That would be where they brought the wheat. They weren't given to God. They weren't blessing God. They were serving other gods, serving other humans. Giving to other people who don't have God as their God, the reward of God. What America's doing. We give our resources to people who defy God. And in return, we are defying God. And we wonder why. Because corn and oil, should I say petroleum, is more important than God. Well, that's what's happening here. The floor and the wine press shall not feed them. And the new wine shall fail in her. So you give what God has given you as a blessing over to others and over to gods, which we've seen sacrifices to gods. You know, it is not God. They're given to the golden calves. God doesn't have to bring a volcano. He doesn't have to bring an earthquake. He can just touch your crops. Man needs three things to live. Number one, water. God could cut that off. Or God could give you too much. Number two is food. God can cut that off. And number three is air. And there are people around this world today who are walking around with masks over their face. Because the air is so filthy to breathe. And you find out what kind of place and worship of God's they have there. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land. So they're getting kicked out. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt. God told him not to go. You go. You go without my blessing. You go without God's permission. Well, take care of yourself. You do it without me. And they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. What is that unclean thing? Go back and read the dietary law. <clears throat> Pork. Israel takes the diet of Gentiles. They shall not offer wine offering to the Lord. And they won't. Neither shall they be pleasing unto him, God. Chastise, chastise child in rebellion does not please a father. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as a bread of mourner. So they're going to offer things. Jews today have an offering. They, they celebrate the Passover. But it's not pleasing to God because it's not how God prescribed. First of all, there's no temple. Second of all, they're, they're supposed to be in Jerusalem. So they're going to have some kind of religious service with no profit. And all that eat thereof shall be polluted. For their bread, for their soul shall not come into the house of the Lord that's in Jerusalem. That brings it down to 2016. They are not bringing their sacrifices to the house of the Lord. There is no house of the Lord for the Jew. It's destroyed. And God says, you know what? It's polluted. A Jewish person today, according to Hosea chapter 9, is polluted. What will ye do in the solemn day? In the day 
of the feast of the Lord. What are you going to do when it's gone? Ask any Jew today. For lo, they are gone because of destruction. And Israel will be destroyed. Judah to follow. Egypt shall gather them up. The world's always happy to take you back. They like your money. They sort of like how you conduct your business. But the wages of sin is death, so Memphis shall bury them. You know what it is for a Jew not to be buried in the homeland? It's a disgrace. The pleasant places for their silver. Nettles, that's a kind of like a weed, shall possess them. Thorns. What do you do with thorns besides throw them in a the fire and watch them pop? Shall be in their tabernacle. Now this is North Israel again. Wherever they worship gods, God said, I'll just send you thorns and weeds. You ever see an old farm? No one's working years and years and years. It's ready to fall down. They've got plants growing that was all cleaned up for the animals. The animals would eat. The walls are broken down. That part in, it says in, in Proverbs, I like. There's a, you know, he went by the field of slothful and this other chaos. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of their iniquity. Whose iniquity? The prophet, the spiritual man. And the great hatred. So religion brings hatred. And if you don't believe that, try witnessing to people. And if you really think that they would love the gospel and think you to be smart, preach on the street with an open Bible and see what they compare you to be as a fool, as Paul has said. So the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. It's not... Oh, it's... God's people in the eyes of, of God's people who are living wrong. You're a fool, Hosea. You're a fool, Jeremiah. You're mad. Who gives you the right to say that what God has said about us and our holy land and our temples? And we're going to go back to the queen of, of, of heaven. And since we left off burning her little cakes to her, all this has happened. Hosea and the prophets that God has sent are doing their job because they are being hated. Marvel not if the world hates you. They're on their, they're on their way back to Egypt. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. But the prophet is a snare of a follower in all his ways. Followers are trying to guy uses nets, traps. He wants to do something wrong, but boy, that prophet steps up in there. I wish the Lord would hurry up and get me a, a, a new career field where I have Fridays and Saturdays off. Friday nights. Because I would go on the streets downtown on Friday night or Saturday night for the purpose, and it may be wrong, to ruin someone's party. It's Friday night, Saturday night, time to go party. The worst thing you do not want to hear is somebody on the street to give you the gospel. You don't want somebody quoting scripture to you as you're going to go drink your, your guts out. Because I know the Holy Spirit can ruin your day. And hatred in the house of his God. Well, look at that. Hatred in the house of God. 
They have deeply corrupted themselves. Not just corrupted, deeply. As in the days of Giva. Giva. <coughs> Therefore he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. And when God visits your sins, you are at a loss. There's no reward. Show me anywhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation where God patted a man on the back for a sin. Here, Mr. Christian, oh, I saw that sin that you did. Here, have a crown. Right? Is that correct? And yet, we are fooled today in this church age. We do it about our own way, not God's way for salvation of souls, and we expect to be blessed. And we're getting deeper and deeper in corruption. Look at the churches. Look where they stand. How many of all the churches in Daytona Beach? I'm one of these days. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to count them all. How many churches in Daytona Beach? And they're on, almost on every street. At least one. Every time I have to take a new street for a detour, there's another church there. We just did the Daytona 500. We know of one church that was there. We know of one family that was there. They're, I believe they're from out of town, Orlando. How many other churches were there of Daytona Beach witnessing the gospel? And I had to wonder, I was thinking that while I was doing that with all these people going in there, and they said thousands make more. How many churches sat with vacant pews because of that race? And they wouldn't dare give a George Washington for the collection plate, but I don't know how many bills make up. Now listen, I saw $650 given out for one ticket twice. $1,000. Past hands. I saw it with my own my own eyes, witness it with my own ears, drop my tongue all the way down to the ground. And I can imagine what they pay for hot dogs and hamburgers and booze in that place. And they'll tell you how many people told you, Oh, I'm a Christian. Really? Keep up the good work. God bless you. And when God rectifies the account, the day of visitation, the day of reckoning, the great white throne judgment, or the judgment seat of Christ, because I don't know. Where will most of your money go? Or where has it gone? I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. You can't just go up to any grapes and expect it to be good. You've got to be tended to. You've got to be the right grape. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. Psalms 106, 28, Numbers 25, 3, Deuteronomy 4, 3. Jesus came to the fig tree and there was no fruit at all. And he cursed it. And it withered up and died. But they went to Baal Peor. It's a God. Numbers 25, 3, Psalms 106, 28. And separated themselves unto their shame. Any other God but the God of the Bible is to your shame. And remember we said it is not God. Chapter 8. That includes Baal. Asterisk. Mary. Joseph Smith. Magazine. Your church. Your pastor. Your water, your family, your job, your car. If, it's a, if it is an it as a God, it is to your shame. And their abominations were according as they loved. I, what was it? I like it is the greatest alibi to sin. Especially when you try to deal with people with music. 
Well, I just like it. Does God like it? Never thought about it like that. You know, who or what you love is where you will follow. We got accused by a church because, you know, we missed Sunday morning for Daytona 500. Listen, we didn't miss church for Daytona 500. We went out there to, to witness to masses of people who had never heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't miss church at all. We were doing what God told us to do. But he set up church and it's time to just complete organization. You've got to follow the assembly line. What do you love? You love you love the praise of man or do you love God? Step out from the pulpit and get out there where a group of people are lost and need the gospel. The Bible tells us go all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say get you in the pulpit. How many times did Jesus in his ministry walk and somebody reached out, Jesus save me, Jesus help me, Jesus cure me. Wait a minute, I'm giving a sermon right here. He had a message one time where he was in the house one time. They broke up the ceiling tile. They dropped the man down in him. I guarantee the owner of the house got upset, but Jesus didn't. And he healed them. And the only ones that got upset were the Pharisees when this guy carried his bed out. Who do you love? As for Ephraim, there's Ephraim again. Their glory shall fly away like a bird. That's not how I'll fly away one day. You let a bird go and it just goes. From the birth. From the womb. And from conception. They don't adhere to any parent. They're just wild. Though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them. That there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. That's God speaking. Let me give you an illustration that's coming up in the future. There's going to be a time on this planet. That people are going to seek death and God says, bear it. And bear it without mercy and bear it without grace. There's your God. Go to Him. If God were to walk up to you and say, Listen, I've had it with you, you're done. You are in big trouble. Even Judas, when he walked up to Jesus the night that he betrayed him to turn him over, I believe Jesus called him friend. I may be wrong on that. But Jesus didn't reject him. He still could have gotten right, but when God says, listen, I, I'm gone from you. I don't even know if there's room for repentance. You just might as well get yourself a, a, a backhoe or a shovel and just start digging your way to hell. Because if God's departed from you, that, that, that's where you're going. And yes, it can happen in the church age for a lost man. You can go, you can go so far. When you read Pilgrim's Progress, there's a guy, he's in a cage. Why was he in a cage? Because God sealed him up, shut him up in that cage. Because there's nothing that God can do for this man anymore. And I believe Pilgrim tells him, he carries a conversation with him. Why don't you just get right? I, I can't. My heart's not with it anymore. The Holy Spirit has departed from me. I can't even repent. I don't even know how. You gotta be careful with sin in your life and your attitude. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, uh oh, Tyrus, 
is it planted in a pleasant place? Hey, great, fruitful, wonderful. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Would you purposely take your children down to a, 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 a filthy neighborhood where there's murder and knifing and robbery and all that? Would you do that? Yet yeah, Ephraim is. And they may not bring him to a ghetto. They may not bring him to the drug alleys and all that. But when you forsake God, you are. When you forsake God as a parent, you just might as just walk up to Satan and say, here you go, take him. What? You're going to drop them? Listen, I, I've seen it overall. You're going to drop them off Sunday school and drive off. Really? That's, that's a great motivation for the child. It was good enough for me to go, but not good enough for the parents. And then you turn around and question why they live in the sin that they do. The other ones rebelled against God. They only followed your example. Give them, O oh Lord. What will thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breath. Inability to have children and an inability to provide for children. And you've read through the Old Testament as we study from Genesis, there were times that God placed judgment upon them that he closed all the wombs. The Bible says children are a gift of God. They are a heritage of God. They're not a burden. If America keeps on going the way she's going, God just say, okay, I just build all the birthing rooms you want and floors in the hospital. You're just not going to have children. Your population will die out. Another way God can destroy a nation is stop making babies. Kill the men. We've already seen that in this chapter. Make them sodomites. That's a great way to not, not have a future of a nation. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give them? Give them miscarrying womb and dry breath. All their wickedness is in Gilead, Gilgal. For there I hated them. Is that the God of love? God is just love. Hosea 9, verse 15. Explain that one then. God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Really? What does it say there? For the wickedness of their doing. You see? It's the wicked. It's the sin. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. I hated them. Why did I hate them? For the wickedness of their doing. But God hated them and their sins. I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. That's a great God is love verse. All their princes are revolted. Reject and rebel against God and you're not going to get love. So anybody who rejects the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ on Saturday morning when we are able to preach to them. And go into their pansy, lily, Easter bunny church Sunday morning and get that God is love crap message. God hates them. You know why? Because Saturday morning they heard the truth. Sunday morning they still want to live in their sin. Hosea 1 through 9, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. And they go about their life, what we're doing is perfectly fine. They go into the little booth. I got mad at this guy preaching against Mary all day. Oh, Father, what do I do? Self, full, full, white Mary's and pitch yourself a grapes or something like that. That ain't going to do you no good. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. They're dead plant. At least later on, 
at least Nebuchadnezzar is going to have a chance. He was cut down. But the stump that lied in the ground still had life in it. This doesn't. They shall bear no fruit. Trees dead. Yea, though they bring forth, they might bring something. Yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. If you want to rebel against God, bring up a child that you love and let God. You need to realize, parent, that you're rebellion. You doing it your own sinful way, one day just may kill your child. Your beloved child, it says. And you'll be the excuse. That's a hard saying when we learn from Hosea. Jesus said, Suffer the little children come unto me. And I when I'm preaching on the streets, when I hear when I see a child, don't hear a child. When I see a child walk with parents, I try to stop my message and quote that verse. Because I want that parent to know, hopefully it's the parent, grandparent, somebody, that those children belong to Jesus, not you. Why did I grow up drinking beer? Why did I grow up smoking cigarettes? Why did I get, get grow up carousing women? Who would I learn it from? I'm going to rest right there. Yea, though they bring forth, bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. My God will cast them away. Because they did not hearken unto him. And they shall be wanderers like Cain, a fugitive and a vagabond. 1 Kings 17, all the way to Ezra. Then 70 AD to 1948, and they're still not really. Like I said, Israel never got back. Ephraim never got back. Ephraim, I believe, is not even mentioned in 144,000. Later on, he's mentioned. Ephraim got God so angry he's not listed among the, the evangelists of the tribulation period. And what I see churches doing with children today in their programs and their candy bars and their paper crowns I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. I don't see it anywhere, anywhere. Matter of fact, paper comes from wood, and wood burns up at the judgment seat of Christ. We've got to be very careful what we do with our children, because what we do with our children today will result in tomorrow. And look at what the children are like today.